This video shows how to solve cash flow equivalence problems using Excel. Cash flow equivalence is the concept that money in the future isn't worth the same as money in the present. Most importantly, cash flow equivalence is used to help make economic decisions. Most economic analysis problems can be solved in one of three ways using functional notation, referring to compound interest rate tables, or using Excel functions. In this video, we will focus on using Excel functions, but first, let's look at functional notation and using the compound interest rate tables. Functional notation is an equation used to mathematically represent an economic situation. This equation solves for a future value, given a present value, the interest rate per period, and the number of periods. Functional notation can be used to solve nearly every cash flow equivalence problem. However, the formulas will get more complex. This is a compound interest table for i equals 10%. Tables like this one can be found in the back of your textbook for common increments of i and n. Using compound interest rate tables, you can solve for a future value using the formula f equals p times f given p i percent n. The disadvantage to these tables is that interest rates like 7.25 percent aren't given. Let's move on to Excel functions. Excel has multiple functions to solve various cash flow problems. These four Excel functions each solve for different variables, future value, interest rate, present value, and constant payments. Let's try an example. If your parents invest $5,000 when you were born, how much will that sum of money be worth when you're 18? assuming interest rates are 7.25% compounded annually. First, you need to identify the variables in this example using notation you're familiar with. F is the future value of your investment. P is the present value of your investment. I is the nominal annual interest rate. M is the number of compound periods per year. M equals 1 because the interest is compounded annually, so just once per year. N is the number of years interest is accrued. Now that we've identified these variables, let's discuss the variables used in Excel. In this example, we're solving for a future value given a present value. In Excel, this notation is FV parentheses rate comma N per comma PMT comma PV comma type end parentheses. Rate is the nominal interest rate per compounding period written in decimal form, previously identified as I equals seven point two five percent. N per is the number of compound periods, previously identified as N times M equals 18. PMT is a constant payment made each investment period and must be given a negative value. In this case, PMT equals zero because there weren't any additional investments. PV is the present value of the asset and also must be a negative value in this equation. PV is an initial investment of negative $5,000. Type is defined as 1 if the interest is given at the end of the period and 0 if it is accrued at the beginning of each period. Now, we are ready to use Excel. 
After opening up Excel, input your defined variables, P, N, I, and M. To calculate rate, divide the annual interest rate by the number of compound periods per year. To define the total number of compound periods, multiply the number of years by the number of compound periods per year. PV must be negative, so remember to add that minus sign. When you're at the point to calculate the future value, start by typing into the selected cell and begin your equation with an equal sign, followed by the function name FV and an open parenthesis. When using functions in Excel, you will be prompted which variable to input next. After you finish your equation, close your parentheses and press enter. Your answer will appear in dollars. An initial $5,000 investment will be worth $17,624 after 18 years of 7.25% interest. Now that the basics of Excel's financial functions have been presented, let's move on to a more complex example about paying back loans. Consider a $50,000 house loan at 3.8% annual interest. Determine the monthly payments required for a 15-year loan versus a 30-year loan. The function in Excel to calculate payments for a loan based on constant payments and constant interest rates is PMT parenthesis rate comma N per comma PV end parenthesis. The rate is the interest rate per period, which can be calculated by taking the annual interest rate divided by the number of periods per year. N per is the total number of periods, calculated by multiplying the number of periods per year by the number of years the loan is being repaid. PV is the value the loan is issued for. Since FV and type are in brackets, if they are left blank, Excel automatically inputs default values FV equals zero and type equals zero. In Excel, we can start by entering our values. The first calculation will be for a 15-year loan, but we will come back and redo this problem for a 30-year loan. In this example, we will define type as zero. For most bank loans, type zero will match the payments for an amortization schedule. Clicking into the command bar, start with an equal sign, followed by the function name PMT. Note that when you start typing into the command bar, Excel supplies a brief description of the function for your reference. If you double click on the function, the format of the function will appear below. As your equation progresses, Excel will highlight the current variable you should input, helping you keep your notation correct. Constant monthly payments of $364.85 for 15 years will repay this $50,000 loan. Now, we can redo this problem for a 30-year loan and compare the monthly payments. By changing the N, the number of years the loan is being repaid over, from 15 to 30 years, the constant monthly payment will update given the new variables. For a 30-year loan, 
monthly payments of $232.98 are required. You may be surprised to see that even though the 30-year loan is twice as long as the 15-year loan, the monthly payment isn't half of the 15-year loan. This is because of the time value of money and illustrates why cash flow equivalence is analyzed.